So in this question, we're going to look at the relationship between physical activity and whether a student goes to high school or university. Since generally as students move from high school to university, their physical activity levels decline. So over here we have the uh, observed counts. So here we sampled 863 students and we looked at uh, three levels of physical activity. So we're going to treat it as a categorical variable with the three categories being low, moderate and vigorous and then the two student categories are high school and university. So for example if we looked at this 4T, well this simply says that out of our sample of 863 we had 14 high school students that had low levels of physical activity. So let's take a look at part A which asks us to compute the conditional distribution of physical activity conditioned on the type of student. So looking back to our table of counts, we basically just want to look at, say, conditioning on that the student was at high school and then just computing the probabilities that they fall into either low, moderate or vigorous levels of physical activity. And so that's what we're going to do down here. Here we're going to compute our conditional distribution. So for example, if we want to look at the low category, we just have to look at the number of people at high school in the low, which is 14 and then just divide by the total number of high school students, which is 294. And then when we put this into our calculator, we get 0.05, or 5% 5 of high school students fall into that low category based on this sample. Then moving on to the moderate case, we have 111 high school students that have moderate levels of physical activity. Again, we have 294 total high school students, and so we get 0.38. Finally, for the vigorous category, we observed 169 high school students from our sample, and again we sampled 294, and so we had 0.57. So this is our conditional distribution of high school students, right? Uh, physical activity uh, based on high school students. So we have 5% in the low category, 38% in the moderate category, and 57% in the vigorous category, and you can see that this sums up to 100%. So now we can move on to the conditional distribution of physical activity given that the student went to university, is at university. So in the first case, we have 69 university students in the low category, and now we've sampled 569 university students. And so again, we put this into our calculator and we get 12%. Then we can move on to the moderate case, and here we have 206 uh, university students with moderate level of physical activity divided by the total number of university students which is 569 and so we get 0 0.36 and then in the final case the vigorous case we had 294 divided by the total of 569 and that gave us 0 0.52 Okay. And there we have our two conditional distributions of physical activity based on the student. So now we're going to take a look at part B, which asks us to carry out a hypothesis test to examine if there's a relationship between physical activity and type of student. So whenever conducting hypothesis tests, the first thing we want to do is spell out our null and our alternative hypothesis. So here our null hypothesis is going to be that there is no association between physical activity and type of student. So let's write this out. So it's H naught for our null hypothesis. And our alternate hypothesis is going to be that there is an association between physical activity and type of student. And we denote that with H little a. So let's read them out again. Our null hypothesis is that there's no association between physical activity and type of student. And then our alternate hypothesis is simply that there is an association between physical activity and type of student. So once we have our hypothesis, hypothesis, hypothesis written out, we can move on to computing our test statistic. So to compute our test statistic, we just want to compute the expected counts under the null hypothesis that there is no association between physical activity and type of student. So let's have a go at computing the expected count of a high school student um, given that they have low physical activity. So to compute this expected count we simply looked at our observed counts 
and we just simply multiply the uh, row total and we multiply it by the corresponding column total and then divide by the total. So for example, here we're looking at high school student with low physical activity. So the row column, uh, the row total is 294. Our column total is 83 and our total is 863. And so that gives us 28.28. And then if we move on to university student with low levels of physical activity, well, we look at the university row and find the total, which is 569. We then multiply that by the column total, which is 83. And then we divide by the total number, which is 863. And that gives us 54.72. Then we can move on to high school and moderate. So the high school row total is 294. The moderate row column is 317. And then again, we divide by the total, which is 863. And that gives us 107.99. And then we continue in this fashion. So here we have the expected counts uh, under the null hypothesis that there is no association between physical activity and type of student. So now that we have computed our expected counts under the null hypothesis, we can compute our observed test statistic. So our observed test statistic is, so we're going to denote this as x squared with a little subscript over here to say it's observed from our data. So to compute our test statistic, we look at our table of actual counts and our expected counts. And so over each particular element of our table, we're just going to take the actual value, subtract away the expected value, take the square and then divide by the expected count. So let's do this. So for high school and low physical activity, our observed count was 14. My expected count was 28.28. We then square it and then we divide by the expected count, which is 28.8. And then we can move on to moderate and high school. So my observed count was 111. My expected count was 108.01. We square it and then we divide by the expected count, which is 108.01. And then we can move on to vigorous. So when we do this for every single possible combination of physical activity and type of student, we will get six summations. And then when we put this into our calculator and sum this up, we get the value 2012.29. Okay. And now that we have our computer test statistic, we have to determine the null distribution. So under H0, what distribution does this observed value come from? So here, this um, x squared observed, it comes from a chi-squared distribution. Square distribution with its degrees of freedom is determined by the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So here we have two rows for high school and university. So it's two minus one. And then we have three columns for low, moderate and vigorous. So three minus one. And so this is just 1 times 2, which is 2 degrees of freedom. If the null hypothesis, so if H0 is true. So now that we've computed our observed test statistic, which turned out to be 12.29, and we know that this comes from a chi-square distribution when H0 is true, we can move on to computing our p-value, which tells us how much evidence that we might have against H0. So our 
p value is given by the following. It's the probability that my null distribution, or in this case, my chi-squared with two degrees of freedom takes a value larger than my test statistic, which was 12.29. So the probability that we want to compute here is if we look at our chi-squared distribution with two degrees of freedom, we look at the value 12.29, okay? And then we want to look at the, the probability that we're greater than 12.29. So we want this area here. And so to compute this, we're going to need the help of RStudio. So here we have uh, some RStudio code. So here we have P, which just stands for the, the distribution, so the probability, probability that we're less than some value. And here we're looking at the chi-square distribution. So here we want to look at the probability that my chi-square distribution takes a value less than 12.29 with two degrees of freedom. So if we go back to our density curve, we know that this value is going to be 0.9979. So here we have 0 0.9979, okay? And we know the area under a density curve must sum to one or must be one. And so we can look at the entire area, which is one, and then subtract the area to the left of 12.29, and that'll give me everything to the right of 12.29. So we can write this uh, more mathematically as just one minus the probability that my chi-squared with two degrees of freedom is less than 12.29. Okay, so then we just have 1 minus the area to the left of 12.29 is 0 0.9979. Okay, and so from there we can simply compute our p-value 0 0.0021. Okay, and this is extremely small. So given that the null hypothesis is true, um, the chances that we observe our test statistic or something more extreme than our test statistic is really, really small. Okay, and so we have evidence against H0. Okay, so this is a statistical conclusion. We also have to bring it back to the original question, which was, is there a relationship between physical activity and type of student? So we've rejected the null, so we accept the alternative hypothesis that there actually is an association between physical activity and type of student. So let's write that up. Okay, so just recapping, we have a really, really small p-value, and so we can reject H0, and back in terms of the original research question, we can conclude that there is an association between physical activity and type of student.